welcome or welcome back to the channel that is AMS MBBS lectures in today's session we're going to in today's session we're going to cover up another topic from CBS microbiology and that is scrub typhus and also called as orangea guys this topic I'll be discussing it under the following subheadings that is the introduction the details about the vector then the clinical manifestations the epidemiology and lastly we're going to do the laboratory diagnosis and the treatment of the topic right okay this scrub typhus we know this there is the order called as rickett sales which is having two families in under it that is your rickett csa and we have the anaplasmataceae guys see okay? now under the family rickett csa we have two genera that is the rickettsia and we have orangea guys see okay? see the detailed classification is something that i have covered in the previous session okay and in which i have also covered the classification and the pathogenesis a lot of information about all the rickett cell infections is covered in the previous session right now we're going to focus mainly on orangea guys see okay? which is okay uh genus under the family rickett csa and uh, this orangea it differs from the another genus that is rickettsia why because it is genetically different as well as it is having some changes in the cell wall composition that it lacks the lipopolysaccharide layer as compared to the genus rickettsia your genus orangea is genetically different and it also lacks the lps layer in the uh, cell wall guys okay lps stands for lipopolysaccharide guys okay now under the uh, genus orangea we have a species called as orangea susugamushi and this species the one which causes your scrub typhus guys okay this species causes your scrub typhus and the vector involved over here is the trombiculate mite is the vector in this case now uh, pay attention to the term that is called as scrub this na this name comes from the scrub vegetation i mean to say that is the areas where there is scrub vegetation that is low lying trees and bushes pe present hote hai, okay where the incidence okay it is this places where the incidence of scrub typhus is hi guys okay therefore the name scrub typhus has been given to this disorder so that was the introduction let's discuss the vector what is the vector of this thing the vector for this disease that is for uh, scrub typhus the vector is the trombiculid mite guys okay it is the trombiculid mite yes or no what is the genus of this particular mite the genus of this mite is leptotrombidium okay leptotrombidium is the genus of the mice and uh, please remember of this mite the uh, genus is leptotrombidium two important species to remember that is a leptotrombidium akamushi seen in japan and we have leptotrombidium dilienesis which is seen in case of india guys okay now this particular uh mite guys the life cycle has been shown over here on this illustration that is the adult mite which is infected with your uh, orangea suso gamushi that is the main organism okay causing the scrub typhus if this particular adult mite is having this organism within itself this is going to lay eggs and it will transmit it to its offspring okay it will transmit this organism into its offspring that is it maintains the organism by trans ovarian transmission guys okay then the larval stage will convert to the nymph stage and nymph will again go back to the adult and the cycle continues guys clear now it is this larval stage okay this larva also called as the chiggers are the one which are going to feed on the humans okay they feed on the humans and thereby they're going to transmit the disease okay and thereby they transmit the disease to the individual guys and therefore this scrub typhus is also called as chigarosis okay it is also called as chigarosis clear with the information with respect to the trombiculid mites which is the vector for scrub typhus now let's have a look on the clinical manifestations clinically there is a triad that we have to remember so the, there is a clinical triad which is seen in nearly 40 to 50 percent cases of scrub typhus we have an eschar okay we have maculopapular rashes and we have regional lymph adenopathy okay we have regional lymph adenopathy now what is an eschar eschar you also know this thing that it is a black crusted lesion okay it is a black crusted lesion with black crusted lesion with an erythematous halo surrounding it and you know, erythematous halo erythematous means redness okay yes we have redness around that particular around that black crusted lesion we have this uh, redness surrounding it that is called as erythematous halo and that structure is what is called as eschar along with eschar we can see the lymph adenopathy and maculopapular rash this is the clinical triad okay seen in nearly 40 to 50 percent cases of your scrub typhus apart from this we have some non-specific manifestations as usual like fever headache myalgia cough 
and some gastrointestinal symptoms as well. There would be some complications as well and other complications we have complications like encephalitis and we have your interstitial pneumonia to remember. Done with the clinical manifestations of scrub typhus. Next thing that we have to cover up is called as the uh, epidemiology to the topic. We are done with the introduction. We have done with the discussion on the vector and we have also covered the clinical manifestations and the associated complications. Now let's have a look on the epidemiology of scrub typhus now epidemiologically guys there are two things to remember that is the zoonotic triad okay what is this zoonotic triad zoonotic triad is nothing but it involves all the essential four elements which are necessary in order to maintain the organism that is orensia susugamushi in the environment okay for it to maintain in the environment we require the trombiculid mite which is the vector we also require small mammals such as your rats field mice or shrews and lastly we have your secondary scrub vegetation scrub vegetation therefore the name scrub typhus and wet season what is the significance of wet season it is the okay during the wet season it is the mites which are going to lay eggs and these eggs are the one which are going to hatch okay hatch into something called as the larva and the larva is the one which is going to feed on the humans okay it is going to feed on humans and thereby spread the disorder guys okay so these are the four important elements which are necessary for the for maintaining the organism that is orensia susugamushi in the environment guys okay now we have the second thing called as the susugamushi triangle matlab geographically dekha jaye to this particular disorder scrub typhus okay is uh, found in the uh, areas okay like your japan and russia in the north to Pakistan in the west to Australia in the south in this three okay uh, particular areas can the therefore it is called as your Suso Gamoshi triangle okay matlab the incidence of scrub typhus is very common among the following areas guys clear with the zoonotic tetrad and the Suso Gamoshi triangle epidemiologically we can also talk with respect to India guys this is an re-emerging infection guys it's an infectious re-emerging infection in India and areas like your sub Himalayan belt Bihar Rajasthan Maharashtra Karnataka Tamil Nadu, Pondicherry and Kerala, these are the areas where this, uh, where the cases of scrub typhus have been reported. Now initially, you so can see normally if I say or mainly if I say, mainly the cases of scrub typhus, ke, those are reported from rural areas. But nowadays there is, has been a recent increase in the uh, cases of scrub typhus from the urban areas and that is what is called as a rural to urban shift. Clear? That marks the end of epidemiology. Now let's cover the laboratory diagnosis and treatment of scrub typhus. When I say lab diagnosis, what are we going to do? We are going to perform serology, guys. Okay? Serological testing is what we are going to do. So basically, the primary infection hota na, in a primary infection, guys, by the end of the first week, IgM antibodies dekhne milti hai, and by the end of the second week, we can see the IgG antibodies. Okay, and in case of reinfection, okay, by day six you see the IgM antibodies and the antibody titers of the IgG antibodies they are a bit variable in case of reinfection, guys. Clear? Then we can do this all three sort of tests. If you have watched the previous video about rickettsial infection, which is a bit lengthy video, but it has a lot of information, guys. Okay. So now a quick question to you: Which among the following? Which among these three guys? Which is the non-specific test? non-specific diagnostic test for rickettsial infections the answer is wheel felix okay so yes wheel felix is a non-specific test guys okay and if you remember the result wala table so you also know that thing if the antibodies to the proteus ox ke antigen ke against your antibodies agar increase hoti hai so definitely it is a case of scrub typhus guys okay apart from this definitely it's a non-specific test then we do the specific test is your ifa and the elisa these are two specific tests out of these two tests okay out of these two tests which is the gold standard test definitely it is the indirect immunofluorescence assay or the ifa which is the gold standard test guys okay apart from this thing we can also do elisa guys that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and this elisa is performed using the 56 kilo dalton recombinant major surface protein antigens come on use okay we perform the elisa guys okay then uh, yes we can also do the molecular test kar sakte ho. and molecular testing means what we are basically using a polymerase chain reaction PCR use karna hai hum log pe. and um, what are the target genes that are we uh, targeting so it is the 56 kilo dalton gene okay or we can also use the 47 kilo dalton gene or we can make use of the 16 s 
our RNA gene can also be used, guys. Clear? And treatment wise, if I say you, what is the drug of choice for most of the rickettsial infections? You should be knowing this. It is your doxycycline. Okay, it is doxycycline. And alternatively, we can give drugs like chloramphenicol or azithromycin. Okay, chloramphenicol de sakte ho, or we can give azithromycin. Done with the laboratory diagnosis, done with the treatment, we mark the end of something called as your scrub typhus, aka orangea, guys. Okay, so that is it for this session. If you found this content useful, then do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or queries, then do comment down. I'm there to answer it. See you on the next one. Bye bye.